the system has been built with a specific flow so that information can be passed along from one record to another, culminating in the transaction record. Users form the backbone of the system, and they are responsible for creating all the data in the CRM. On the client side, companies and contacts are added, and leads are created from contacts. Leads are an expression of interest from a contact to either buy or rent a property. For the developer CRM on the property side, projects are added and the properties are added to those projects. Listings can then be created from properties. A listing is an instance of a property for sale or for rent. For the agency CRM on the property side, projects and listings are added. Offers can then be created from one lead and one listing, which in turn leads to the creation of a transaction or be cancelled. It is important to keep records of all offers made, even those that do not conclude into a transaction, as this is valuable feedback for brokers and property owners. Internal broker and payment records can be created from transactions. All of the data in the system feeds into the automated reporting sections, giving valuable insight into all aspects of the business. There are various profile types in PropertyNexus CRM that allow the company to control who has the ability to create and access a record. Record access is done in four different ways, creating, viewing, editing, and deleting. Create access allows a user to create a record of that type. View access allows a user to see the information in a record. Edit access allows a user to make changes to fields in the record. And delete access allows for the deletion of a record from the CRM. The profiles are set out in a hierarchy, with the top level being the director, sales manager, and sales administrator. There is a separate profile for accountants that has different access rights than other profile types. The next level is that of team manager and administrator, followed by the broker. It is very important to get this hierarchy set up correctly in your company, and we will help you make sure that it is correct. All profiles have view and edit access for records owned by them. Team managers and administrators also have view and edit access to all records owned by members assigned to their team. The top level of profile for directors, sales manager and their sales administrator have access to view and edit all records in the CRM. Deletion of records can only be done by the top tier of profiles, director, sales manager and sales administrator. And this is to ensure that no data is lost accidentally or maliciously. The exception to these rules is that every profile, except accountant, can view all listings and project records. Also, the broker profile does not have access at all to the transaction and related modules of payment that the internal broker and accountant have. There are differences between the developer and agency CRM when it comes to records of projects, properties and listings, and these tables highlight the differences. These tables can also be found in the screenshots accompanying this video on our website. The record owner is the user that currently owns a particular record. The owner has the right to view and edit a record, but may not be able to delete it depending on their profile. You may also have the right to view and edit other users' records, and you can find out more about this in the video tutorial. User, user profiles, hierarchy, and record access. You can find out who is the current owner of a record by looking at the system information section at the bottom of any record. A user can change the owner of a record that is theirs, but if they have a profile that does not permit them to see the records of a new owner, then they will no longer be able to view or edit the record. The user profile page is where each user can see and modify the information specific to them. The information is divided into sections for general information, access details that show you what access you have to the system, contact details and employment details that record your employment start date and compensation overview. A profile photo can be uploaded and changed whenever required. You can select the system language that you want the CRM to display in. This can be modified at any time. For some of this information, that which is not confidential, can be sent to property portals that have the capability of showcasing brokers, so make sure that it is always accurate. In general, there are two main ways to create records. You can use the New button on the top right of the Modules list page, or the Add New button in the drop-down menu from the main tab for that module at the top of the page. For you to be able to save a new record, you must fill in any mandatory fields. 
These will be prompted for if you don't fill them in and try to save. You can also create some records from other records, like leads from contacts or transactions from offers. In general, these are two main ways to create records from other records. In the view record page of any record, use the new buttons at the top right of the screen or on the related tab in the appropriate section, click the new button. The main exceptions for this is for transactions, which can only be created from offers, and for internal broker and payment records, which can only be created from transactions. There is a new button for each of these in the view record page for offer and transaction. Views are an easy way to filter the records in the system and to see the most appropriate fields for what it is that you are searching for. Each module has different views which you can access by clicking on the module on the main menu by hovering over the main menu and selecting the module lists link. The view dropdown allows you to select the most appropriate view and the owned by dropdown allows you to select to see the records owned by you, your team or everyone depending on your profile access. Each module also has filters that allow you to filter the records further and you can then sort by each column to get the order that you want. There could be multiple pages of records and you can choose between 10, 25 or 50 records per page with the button on the bottom left of the page and see the page numbers on the bottom right of the page. Views can be very useful when looking for records. For example, to find all the companies that are real estate agencies, to view all your contacts that are buyers, to view all the leads that are sale leads of good and excellent quality, to view sale and rental listings separately, to view all incoming or outgoing payments, and then filter by those that are due. You can then download an Excel file of any view that you have on screen by clicking the export button at the top right of the table. You can learn more about this in the video Exporting views as reports. Tables of records can easily be downloaded from any list page for any module and exported to an Excel file with the click of a button. On the list page for the chosen module, once you have selected the view and owned by dropdowns, set the filters and sort by the column that you want the records to download in. You can simply push the export button at the top right corner of the table. This will download the chosen view in a standard Property Nexus Excel file template, which shows you the view, owned by, and filter details that you selected. It also shows you some system information, like when and by which user the file was created. All views from all modules are downloadable at any time without limitations, unless otherwise prescribed by your administrator for your profile type. There are two ways to edit a record. Both of them are from the View Record page. One way is to click the Edit button at the top right of the page, and the other is to double click on the pencil icons that you find in the right of every editable field. There are various fields that cannot be edited. These are typically formula fields, system generated fields, or fields that cannot be changed because they would affect record fields of another record. These fields do not have a pencil icon next to them. Once you have made changes to the fields that you would like to edit, please make sure that you click the update button in the bottom right of the page to confirm the changes. If you close the page without pressing this button, all changes made will be lost. It may be important to know who created a record and when it was created, as well as who modified it last and when. It may also be important to know previous values for fields that have been changed, like old phone numbers and so on. All of these can be checked on the View Record page for each record in the system. At the bottom of the Details page in the System Information section, you can see when and by whom the record was created and last modified. These fields are system generated and cannot be modified. You can also see the current owner of the record. This can be changed. To track the last manual changes that have been made to the field that are not system generated, go to the related tab of any record and scroll to the bottom to find the history section. Here you will find all the last manual changes to the fields in this record. The related tab is where you can see which other records are related to this record. For various modules, there could be a few related modules or none. By clicking on the Related tab for each record, you will be able to see the types of records that can be related to this record type, as well as the records themselves. 
For some record types, you can also create new records directly from here with the New button. Here you will also find the Files section allows you to upload, edit the name of, and delete files. It also serves as a database of all the documents that you want to save to this company, like license documents, commission agreements, and other related documents. You will also find the History section, which shows you the manual changes that have been made to fields so you can track previous field data. Files can be uploaded and stored in each record, regardless of the record type. You can upload passport or ID copies to contacts, ownership documents to properties or listings, and any other documents that you feel should be stored with that record. This can be done in one of two ways. Firstly, find the record to which you would like to upload the documents. Then, either click on the Upload File button at the top right of the page, or click on the Related tab. Scroll to the bottom and click on the file section and either drag and drop the file or click on the section to bring up the file browser pop-up and select the documents you would like to upload. Then click the upload button at the bottom of the section. You can then either delete the document if you have the correct access permissions by clicking the delete button or change the name of the file by clicking the edit button typing in the new name and clicking save. Saving a file with a concise and easy to understand file name is always recommended so that you can see what the file is without having to open it. The activities module allows you to add communication and listening activity notes to any record and then set calendar reminders. The activities can then be viewed on the record or in the calendar where you can see them per day, week and month. In your dashboard, you can see all of the activities that you have set for the coming 14 days. You can also add new activities to any record from here. Activities can be created with the Add New Activity button in the main tab drop-down from the dashboard or from any record directly in the Activities block on the right or at the bottom on mobile. The Activities type can be set to Viewings and photo shoots of Listings or Communication with Contacts, Meeting, Phone Call, Email, Message or a Reminder to Contact. Each activity must also have a start and end time. You can also set an objective for each activity and add in any comments, like feedback after a phone call or meeting. You can also add other attendees, which will include these contacts or users into the activity, and then you can send them a color invite to the email addresses. Adding in all of your activities is a very useful way of tracking your to-do list. Noting down how many listings you have shown any client and how many times you have shown a listing and keeping a record for later recall. This multi-select field allows you to specify which roles this contact fulfills in your organization. You can select one or more contact types because contacts quite often fulfill more than one role. It allows you to easily see the different contact types by filtering them using the views on the view page specific to that contact type. Pull up a list of all your buyers, sellers, service providers, property owners or brokers to more easily find the correct contact or set of contacts. This section allows you to record exactly how each contact came to know about your company and for developers who is responsible for this contact administratively. Lead source shows the channel from which they came originally. This is used for marketing reports and other important reporting functions, so it is important that it is filled in correctly. Referring contact and referring company field allows you to show if they were referred to you by another client or broker. This is especially important for developers who need to control payment of commissions to agencies and brokers. Assigned sales admin is for developers to show which administrator is responsible for this contact especially if there are buyers who need to be guided through the purchasing procedures. The status, stage and quality score fields let you know where exactly in the buying process your client is and they allow you to filter your leads to check which ones need your immediate attention. The quality score not only allows you to rank your leads in terms of likelihood to close, but also gives your marketing team feedback that they can use to improve marketing campaigns. The status field is there to easily filter those leads that you are currently working on, 
as well as those that you have not yet responded to. The four options are pending for those that you have not yet contacted, active for those that you are currently working on, inactive for those that are not completely dead but might need more time to close, and closed for those that you are no longer working on. The stage field allows you to note where in the sales process you are, from contacted to in communication, once they have responded through the viewing process, through to offer and transaction stages. Use this field to further clarify where each lead is in your pipeline. The quality score field is there to let you know what the probability is of closing the lead and also lets your marketing team know how well each campaign is working in terms of the quality of leads that it is producing. This is a very important field for management and reporting, so please ensure that it is completed to the best of your knowledge and intuition. The listing field in the lead record allows you to either show from which listing this lead originally came or select the most appropriate listing that you think this client will be interested in. If a lead came from your website or a property portal from a page that was specifically for one particular listing, then recording from which listing this was is very important. It allows you to track the marketing performance of each of your listings in terms of number of leads received. It also allows you to give feedback on the efficacy of your marketing to sellers or landlords and may be a good tool for negotiating a price reduction if you feel the price may be too high. If this is a generic lead, then add the listing that you feel is at the top of the list for the client. By linking a listing to a lead, it will pull additional fields through to the offer record should you convert this lead to an offer. This will save you time when filling out the offer record. The requirements section helps you to record exactly what the client is looking for, thus helping you to qualify the client. This section will help you to remember to ask for the right information and these fields are the ones used in matching to a listing tab which will save time when looking through your leads as well as those of your colleagues. Fill out as many of the fields with as accurate information as possible and if the requirements of a client changes over time, come back and update these fields to make sure you have the latest requirements recorded. The message field is where the contents of a web lead is added and the comments field is there for you to make additional notes should they be required. These fields are there to accurately record how this lead came to the company. This is crucial for reporting and helps the marketing department track the performance of their campaigns. The fields are all dependent on the information in the field above. So depending on which option you select, it will affect the subsequent fields. So make sure to select the most accurate option for each field. Requested via allows you to select the method of communication for how the lead was first in touch with you or the company. The source channel is the channel through which the lead came. If you do not know this information, it is always good practice to ask, as it will help the marketing team to further target good quality leads. The source website allows you to specify the exact website through which the lead came, if it came from an online source. The source page allows you to further specify the exact page of the source website that the inquiry came from. The referring company field allows you to record the company through which you received a lead as a referral if the lead came to you from another agency or partner. The company must be filled in the system first for you to be able to select it here. So if you have not added it already, go ahead and add it and then come back to this field and fill it in. The referring contact field allows you to record the contact through which you received a lead as a referral. If the lead came to you from another agency, referral partner or existing client. As with the company record, the contact record must be in the system first for you to be able to select it here. The lead to listing matching functionality will save you a lot of time in matching your leads to available listings that either you or other members of your team have. Make sure that you have filled in as many fields in the lead as possible and especially the minimum beds required, property types, area of interest and maximum budget fields as these will be the fields that match the listing records. Go to the matching tab on the lead that you want to see the listing matches for and any listing that matches your lead's requirement will be displayed in the table with the closest match at the top of the list. 
You can access the listing records directly from the table by clicking on the listing ID field link. You can also see which broker is responsible for the listing in the owner field so that you can speak to them to get any details that are not recorded in the listing record. There are several fields which allow you to control various marketing tools as well as set the title and descriptions for advertising online and in the project brochure. In general, it is important to fill in as many of the fields in project records as completely as possible so that your brokers have a complete picture of the project. This is important for developers and agencies alike. For complete information on the project brochure, please see the video Project, Project Brochure, How to Create and Share. In the marketing section, there are various minimum and maximum fields that allow you to set a range of prices, bedrooms, as well as gross, net, and plot areas. The broker and second broker will allow you to advertise this project under the names of one or two brokers. Please make sure that the name, mobile number, and email addresses, as well as their profile photo are correct in the user records for any broker that you add to these fields. This information will be sent to portals and your websites should they be connected, as well as to the project brochure. The Advertise on our website and Advertise on portals checkboxes allow you to select if you wish to advertise this project on either of those channels. These will have to be selected in the marketing status field set to active for them to be automatically published to these websites if you have active fields to them. Project brochures can be downloaded or emailed to contacts from the project record page. This standard template will automatically generate the brochure with all the details and images that have been entered into the project's record correctly. You must make sure that the following fields have been filled in to ensure no information is missing from the brochure. Title, number of units, unit types, project type, ownership, construction status, completion date and handover date from the main details section, architect and interior designer from the partners section, all the fields in the features and communal facilities that are applicable, minimum price, minimum bedrooms, maximum bedrooms, minimum gross area, maximum gross area, description and second broker if applicable from the marketing section. You will also need to ensure that the profile photo Work email, work mobile, and work phones fields are filled in for the user that owns the project record and the second broker. The company details section in the admin panel also needs to be filled in correctly, including the company logo. You will require six images to be loaded into the brochure section and six into the construction update section, if applicable, on the images and media page. You will also have the option of adding one or more floor plans in the floor plan section. The brochure can be easily shared by downloading it with the brochure PDF button in the top right of the page or sent to a contact by using the email brochure button and then selecting the contact. There are various ways in which to create a new listing record. You can use the new button on the top right of the listing page or the Add New Listing button in the drop-down menu from the main listing tab at the top of the page. You can also create a listing directly from a contact record, which will automatically assign that contact to the new listing. In the contact record page, use the New Listing button at the top right of the screen, or in the Related tab in the Listing section, click the New button. For you to be able to save a new listing, you must fill in the listing field, which, once created, cannot be changed, and the property type and title fields. This is a very important field which not only informs the client of exactly what type of property you are advertising, but it also determines some of the fields that you will be shown in the rest of the listing record. It is very important to get this field correct, so it is crucial that you know the difference between each property type. In the developer CRM, this field can only be changed in the property record. Apartments are those which are part of a building, which can have as few as two properties, one on top of the other, or as many as several hundred. 
Houses are freestanding properties that consist of one or more buildings but are located on a physically undivided piece of land. Townhouses are similar to houses, but they are joined to at least one other townhouse with at least one common wall. These are defined as being terraced or attached if they are between two other properties or as semi-detached if they are only attached to one neighboring property. Residential land is vacant land with no built structures on it that has the permission only for residential usage. Residential buildings are entire buildings with two or more apartments that are being sold as one asset. Offices are either open or divided by walls and are designated for work, not for living. Retail properties are those designated for shops, restaurants, salons and other places of business that have customers visiting the space to purchase goods or receive a service. Industrial spaces are properties used for storage, manufacturing, packing and logistics like warehousing, storage units, and workshops. Commercial land is vacant land with no built structures on it that has the permission only for commercial usage. Potential uses of the land could be for farming or for the construction of any commercial property type. Farms are large pieces of land with at least one property that are being used for the farming of either plants or animals. Commercial buildings are entire buildings with two or more commercial properties, like the offices of retail spaces that are being sold as one asset. Hotels are commercial establishments, offering lodging to travelers and are being sold as one asset. There are various fields in the listing record that will show depending on the property type that is selected for this listing. These fields will show and be editable in the Features section once the Property Type field has been selected from the drop-down list. Please be careful to select the correct property type for each listing. It can be changed, but it will save you time in adding the listing. The following fields are available for the property types listed below. For some property types, all of the fields of the sections built in appliances and communal facilities will not show so these sections will be empty. These fields allow you to record information pertaining to any agreements you have with the seller or landlord of the property. The most important of these fields is status. This field controls the automated marketing that your company has set up with your company website and property portals. Once you mark the status as active, this listing will automatically be published on your website and property portals with which you have a contract. Please make sure that the information is complete and all has been added correctly before changing the status to active. The date listed field allows you to monitor how long this listing has been on the market for. The available from field allows you to record when the property is available, which could be for rental properties or sale properties should the seller wish to live in it for some time before the new buyer moves in. The listed price is the price that will be publicly marketed on all your online channels, so make sure this amount is correct. The agreement type is where you record the type of mandate that you have with the seller, and the start date lets you record when this agreement came into effect. The commission rate agreed is recorded as a percentage of the sale price. The external broker field can be used by agencies to record the broker that is representing the seller in a deal that you did with another company in a split deal. And for developers, you can record resale listings of the properties that were built by you to keep track of how your properties perform over time. These fields allow you to control various marketing tools as well as set the title and description for advertising online and in the listing brochures. The listing ID field is system generated and can be used for your website and property portals as a quick reference for clients to inform you which listing they are interested in. The second broker field allows you to add a second broker to the listing should you wish to market it with another team member. The listing score field shows a percentage rate of how complete the information is in your listing record to show you how well this listing is likely to perform online where clients typically like to have as much information as possible. The total leads field shows you how well this listing is performing by showing you how many leads have been received on it. The advertise on our website and on portals checkboxes 
allow you to select if you wish to advertise this listing on either of those channels. These will have to be selected and the status set to active for them to be automatically published to these websites if you have active feeds to them. Your CRM can be set up to automatically feed your listings to your website and local property portals, should they have the capability of linking to a CRM, and if you have a contract to be able to list with them there. Please check with your management which sites your listings will be automatically sent to. In order to automatically feed your listings to these sites, you first have to make sure that as many of the fields in the listing record are filled in, and that you have uploaded a few photos to the record. This will also give you a high listing score, so check this field in the marketing section to make sure that it is above 60. Once you are satisfied with the information that you have recorded, you will need to change the status field in the availability section to active, and then you will need to check the boxes for advertise on our website and or advertise on portals in the marketing section of the listing record. Once these steps have been done, your listing will be published on the sites with which your CRM is linked automatically. This may not happen immediately as some websites and portals only pull this information from your CRM once or twice a day. Property Nexus website templates pull this information every few minutes so you can see the changes almost straight away. Any changes that you make to fields in the listing record will be updated when the website next pulls information from your CRM. So as long as the status remains unactive and the advertised checkboxes are not unchecked. To remove your listing from these websites, either change the status to another option, which will remove it from all channels, or uncheck the boxes to remove it from either your website or the portals. Your listing will be unpublished as soon as the website pulls information from the CRM again. While it is important to name your files accurately and concisely, this is very important for floor plans in your listing records. The listing brochure can be generated directly from the CRM and it will place any floor plans that you have added in the document. The file name will be placed as a label on the page for the floor plan, so it is important to get it correct. For more information, see the videos on listing brochures. We would suggest giving the floor plans the name of the floor or unit type, for example, ground floor, or villa type C. Images can be added to listings, and once added, these images can be used for marketing through portals, your own website, and from the property brochure. These images can be photos, renders, floor plans, or any other image that you would like to use in the marketing of the listing. To add images, go to the Image and Media tab in the Listing Record page and click on the Click to Upload Images section. You can then either drag and drop photo files to this box or click on it to bring the file search box. Select the image you want to upload to this listing and click the Upload button. The image will be added to this section below showing you a thumbnail of the image and details as well as a series of tags and buttons to download, edit, or delete the image. You can edit the name of a field by clicking the Edit button, changing the name and clicking Save. We recommend that you do this so that finding the images later is easy. For floor plan images, the file name will be what displays on the property brochure page for this floor plan, so we recommend saying which floor it is, for example, ground floor or first floor. Once images have been uploaded to a listing, you can tag them with the different marketing channels that you want to include them in and rearrange the order in which you want the images to display. You can tag the images in one of two ways, either with the tag checkboxes next to each image or in the section for each marketing channel, you can click add all button, which will apply this tag to every image that you have uploaded. To view the images that you have selected for each marketing channel, select the channel from the drop-down box at the top left of the page. You can deselect the images that you do not want in this channel in the list below by deselecting the tag for this channel next to the image. You can also click the Clear All button to remove all tags of this channel from all images. You can reorder the images in each marketing channel box by dragging and dropping them. Each channel can have a different order of display. Whenever you make changes that you want to save, please make sure that you click the Save Changes button in the top left of the page. 
You can save yourself some time by following these tips and tricks when uploading images to your listings. After a few listings, the process will only take you a minute or two. When saving the images on your computer before you upload them, make sure that you save them in one folder together with the floor plans for the property and make sure there are no other files in this folder. Make sure that the files have short and descriptive names and that the floor plans are also correctly named. Upload all your images in one go by selecting all the files in the folder. Once all your images are uploaded, select the website marketing channel and click the add all button. Do the same for the portals channel. Then scroll down the list of images looking for floor plans and the four best images that you would like to include in the brochure and select the floor plans or brochure tag when you find them. Then go back to each marketing channel and rearrange the images in the order of which you want them to display. The listing to lead matching functionality will save you a lot of time in matching your listings to active leads that either you or other members of your team have. Make sure that you have filled in as many fields in the listing as possible and especially the location, property type, bedrooms and listed price fields as these will be the fields that match the lead records. Go to the matching tab on the listing that you want to see the lead matches for and any lead that matches your listing's details will be displayed in the table with the closest match at the top of the list. You can access the lead records directly from the table by clicking on the listing ID field link unless the lead is not owned by you. In this case you can see which of your colleagues owns the lead in the owner field and you can speak to them about the potential buyer or tenant. Listing brochures can be downloaded or emailed to the contacts from the listing record page. The standard template will automatically generate the brochure with all the details and images that have been entered into the listing record correctly. You must make sure that the following fields have been filled in to ensure that no information is missing from the brochure. Listing type, location, ownership, property type, and construction status from the main details section. Bedrooms, bathrooms, other rooms, parking type, parking spaces, net internal area, balcony area, gross internal area, plot area and view from the unit details section. You will also need to fill in as many of the fields applicable from the features, built-in appliances and communal facilities section. You also need to fill in the listing price field in the availability section and the title, description and second broker if applicable fields in the marketing section. You will also need to ensure that the profile photo, work email, work mobile and work phone fields are filled in for the user that owns the listing record and the second broker. The company details section in the admin panel also needs to be filled in correctly including the company logo. You will require four images to be loaded into the brochure section on the images and media page. You will also have the option of adding one or more floor plans in the floor plan section. The brochure can easily be shared by downloading it with the brochure PDF button in the top right of the page or sent to a contact by using the email brochure button and then selecting the contact. Lead and offer records can easily be created directly from the listing record by either clicking the new lead or new offer buttons in the top right of the page or by going to the related tab and clicking the new button in the correct section. When creating a lead or offer this way, the listing field in the new record will be pre-filled with the listing that the record was created from. Once created, fill in the remaining fields before saving as there will be other mandatory fields that you must fill in before being able to save the new records. There are various ways in which to create a new offer record. You can use the new button at the top right of the offers list page or the add new offer button in the drop down menu from the main offer tab at the top of the page. For you to be able to save a new offer, you must fill in the lead, listing and offer amount fields. You can also create an offer directly from a lead or listing record, which will automatically assign that lead or listing to the offer. 
In the lead record page, use the new offer button at the top right of the screen. In the listing record page, use the new offer button in the top right of the screen. Or on the related tab in the offer section, click the new button. There are two types of offer records, those for sale offers and those for rental offers. When creating an offer, the offer type will be taken from the lead or listing record that you insert in the offer. Sale leads and listings will create sales offers and rent leads and listings will create rental offers. There are only small differences between these two record types. The fields will either be marked with buyer and seller or tenant and landlord. In the sale record type, there is a field called finance method, which allows you to specify if this offer is being made with a mortgage from a bank or in cash. Once the offer record has been created, if you are in any doubt as to which type of offer record this is, you can find it in the system information section at the bottom of the page on the left hand side. There are two broker fields in each offer record the broker that represents the buyer or tenant, and the broker that represents the seller or landlord. Both of these fields are automatically filled in from the lead and listing records respectively. The seller or landlord's broker is taken from the listing record. The seller or landlord's broker will either be the contact referenced in the external broker field in the availability section, or if this field is blank, then it will be the user who is the record owner of the listing record. The buyer or tenant's broker is taken from the lead record. The buyer or tenant's broker will either be the contact reference in the referring contact field in the source section, or if this field is blank, then it will be the user who is the record owner of the lead record. These fields cannot be changed in the offer record. They must be changed in the lead and listing records. Buyer or tenant's broker can be changed by editing the referring contact field or record owner in the lead record. Seller or landlord's broker can be changed by editing the external broker field or record owner in the listing record. Each and every offer that you receive should be added to the CRM. This applies to chains of the counter offers where each offer in the chain should be recorded so that you can see the evolution of the offer. Once you have received an offer, create a new offer record and change the status to active. If the buyer or tenant's offer is rejected and given a counter offer by the seller or landlord, you can change the status to the offer to counted by, either clicking on the counter offer button in the top right page or by clicking the edit button and changing the status of the offer to counted. We recommend using the counter offer button as this will automatically create a new offer from the old offer record with all of the fields filled in and it will change the status of the old offer to counted. Please make sure that in the new offer counter you fill in the fields offered by, offered amount and finance method for sales offers as well as the offer date which will automatically set as today's date but can be changed. Similarly for accepting offers you can change the status of the offer to Accepted By either by clicking on the Accept Offer button in the top right of the page or by clicking the Edit button and changing the status of the offer to Accepted. Again, we recommend using the Accept Offer button as this will automatically create a new transaction from the offer record with all of the fields filled in and it will change the status of the offer to Accepted. If you close the new transaction page without saving it, when you return to the offer record page, the accept offer button will have changed to new transaction, which you can click to create the transaction from this offer. There is only one way in which to create a new transaction record, and that is from an offer record. Go to the view record page for the offer from which you want to create a transaction. If the offer already has the status accepted, then click a new transaction button at the top right of the page. If it does not, then you will need to click the accept offer button which will change the status for you as well as opening up the new transaction page. When creating a transaction, a lot of the fields will be filled in for you from the offer record, but make sure to fill in as many of the other fields as possible. 
you will need to fill in the start date and expected closure date fields, as well as the company's role field from the main detail section. You will also need to fill in a few fields in the price breakdown section and all the fields in the commission breakdown section. As you go through this process of the transaction, you will mark off the legal procedure step section so that you know exactly where in the transaction process you are. Broker profiles do not have the rights to create, view, or edit transactions. So please contact your manager or administrator to find out more about this module or to register a sale or rental. The transaction status and date fields are very important for management to understand their cash flows, so filling in these fields is extremely important. The status field with the options open, closed and cancelled allows you to control how the information populates the reporting section. The start date is the date on which the agreement between the buyer and seller or landlord and tenant is signed and the transaction is officially in process. The expected closure date is the date on which you expect the transaction to close and the commission to be due. It is important to show when you are reasonably expect a transaction to close and it affects the sales volume performance report as well as other important reports. The closure date is the actual date on which the transaction officially closes. It is important to show when a transaction has been closed and it affects the sales volume performance report as well as other important reports. In the developer version of our CRM, you have the ability to create transactions for sales of your own properties as well as resale listings. This is the distinction between developer sale and sale, where developer sale is the, for the sale of listings owned by the developer for which the CRM is being used, and sale is for sales where the seller is an individual person or another developer. In the agency version of our CRM, you will only have access to the sale and rent transaction types. A rent transaction is for a short-term leasing of properties, a few months to a few years, and in countries where there are technically no sales of properties, you would use a long-term leasing, which is 40 years or plus, as a sales transaction, not a rent transaction type. It is quite common for an agency to be involved in a transaction with a broker from another agency. In this case, you will need to enter the other party's details in the CRM. If you are representing the buyer, you will need to add the seller's broker's agency as a company and then add the broker as a contact in that company. You will also need to add the seller as a contact and set the referring contact and referring company fields to that of the broker and agency. From the seller's contact, you can create a new listing and enter all the details of the property. From the listing, you can create an offer and add in the lead from your buyer. Fill in all of the details and then accept the offer and create the new transaction. If you are representing the seller, you will need to add the buyer's broker's agency as a company and then add the broker as a contact in that company. You will also need to add the buyer as a contact and set the referring contact and referring company fields to that of the broker and agency. From the buyer's contact, you can create a new lead and then select the listing that is being transacted on and enter all the other details of the lead. In the source section, set the requested via field with the appropriate option, then set the source channel to agency referral and set the referring contact and referring company fields to that of the broker and agency. From the lead, you can create an offer, fill in all of the details and then accept the offer and create the new transaction. You can then fill in the remaining fields in the transaction record, as all of the other fields will have pulled through. The price breakdown fields give you an overview of the listed and offered prices and the differences between them. Listing price is the price that the property was listed for in your listing record. Final price is the price that the transaction concluded for and is the offered amount price from the offer that this transaction was created from. Percentage of listed price is the percentage difference between the final price and the listing price. A number above 100% means that the listing sold for more than the listed price, and a number below 100% means it sold for less than the listing price. This will give you a good idea of how the market is performing, and when you have several transactions in the system, you will start to see a trend. 
This is very useful when talking to sellers and landlords to give them an idea of what kinds of offers they should be expecting on their listings. For sale and developer sale transaction types, the mortgage taken field allows you to record if this transaction was done with the buyer taking bank finance for his purchase. The rental transaction types and the payment terms fields allow you to record if the payment terms are monthly, quarterly, semi-annually or yearly. The deposit amount field allows you to record how much deposit was paid by the tenant for the rental. The payment method field allows you to record who the payment will be made by the tenant to the landlord. All of these fields will make it easy to renegotiate the lease agreement when it comes to an end or to place a new tenant if this tenant leaves. The Commission Breakdown section allows you to control and calculate the commissions for each transaction. These fields differ between developer sale transaction type and sale and rental transaction types. There are a few fields which needs to be filled in manually and then the rest are automatically calculated by the CRM. The following diagrams will show you how these fields are filled and calculated. The Legal Procedure Steps section allows you to track the progress of each transaction based on what steps have been completed and recording the date on which each step was completed. This section will have a series of date fields that once the step has been completed, the date on which the step was completed should be filled in. This section will be different for each country as the steps and processes are different in each country. There are fields in the transaction record that you cannot edit from the transaction record directly as they pull through from other related records of offer, listing, lead and the contacts for the buyer and the seller. There are also some calculation fields that cannot be edited directly. You can only affect their values by changing the values of other fields. These diagrams show you exactly where each of these fields is pulled from. These diagrams show you exactly how each of the calculation fields are calculated. Internal broker records are used to assign commission amounts earned and paid to your brokers to each transaction and calculate the breakdown of commissions received. Internal broker records can only be created from a transaction record in one of two ways. Either by clicking the new internal broker button at the top right of the page, or from the Relate tab, clicking the New button in the Internal Brokers section. For you to be able to save a new Internal Broker record, you must fill in the Broker and Broker's Role fields. The Broker and Broker's Role fields allow you to assign this Internal Broker record to one of your brokers and select their role in the transaction. By assigning the Broker field, you are assigning the commission earned in the field below to the broker and can therefore track their performance in reports. The Broker's Role field allows you to show which clients broker represented in the deal. For developer sale transactions, this will either be seller's agent if the buyer is represented by a broker from an agency, or buyer and seller's agent if your broker is representing the buyer directly. This could be the buyer, seller, or buyer and seller's broker in a sale transaction, or the tenant, landlord, or the tenant and landlord's broker in a rental transaction. For sale and rental transactions, they could also be the middle broker if this broker was the go-between for the brokers in the transaction. For all transaction types, if you have a team manager in your organization that receives a management override commission on their team's transactions, you can add them as an internal broker record and set this broker's role to team manager. It is important to set these fields correctly as they affect the total internal broker's commission and total management override fields in the transaction as well as the reporting module. 
The commission earned and paid fields allow you to assign how much of the commission from each transaction each broker is responsible for earning and what percentage of that commission they are paid based on the commission split with the company. The commission earned set of fields can be entered either as the currency amount or as a percentage of the total company commission. The other amount will automatically fill in the value based on the number you put in the adjacent field. The value of these fields will be used in the calculation of the total internal broker commission field in the transaction record, so it is important to get these correct. The commission paid set of fields works in a similar way, but they are calculated on the commission earned amounts above. The commission paid percentage field will pull from the commission split percentage that you have included in your broker in the corresponding user record, but this can be adjusted if a different split has been agreed upon for this deal. Payment records are used to record information for incoming, outgoing and internal payments. For more information on payment types, please see the video Payment, Incoming, Outgoing and Internal Payment Types. Payment records can only be created from a transaction record in one of two ways, either by clicking the New Payment button at the top right of the page, or from the Related tab by clicking the New button in the Payment section. For you to be able to save a new payment record, you must fill in the payment type and payment due date fields. Payments are created as one of three types, incoming for payments due to your company, outgoing for payments due to third party companies, and internal for commission payments due to your brokers. It is important to select the correct payment type as there are fields in the record that will be affected by your selection. For example, the incoming payment has a field for payer, an outgoing for payee, and the internal payment has neither of these fields. Instead, it has fields for the related internal broker where the record of their commission earning is recorded, and related incoming payment where the record of commission received by the client is recorded. Once selected, this field can be changed, but you may lose data in some of the fields, so best to get it right in the beginning. This field is also mandatory, so it must be filled in before saving a record. The Payment Status field allows you to record whether the payment is pending, due, paid or cancelled. This field is used in various views and reports, so it is important that it is filled out accurately and always updated when the status changes. All pending and due payments also show in your dashboard, so that you can easily monitor those payments that you need to handle urgently. Once you have marked a payment as paid, please be sure to fill out the payment method, payment reference and date paid fields with the information on the payment. You can also upload a copy of the transfer order or a copy of the check as well as the invoice and receipt for this record to keep a full record for this payment. There are various amount fields in the different payment types and it is important to fill them in correctly. The incoming and outgoing payment types have three amount fields, amount due, amount paid, and amount received. For incoming payments, amount due is the amount that should be paid to your company. The amount paid is the amount that was actually sent by the payer, and the amount received is the actual amount that was cleared in your bank account after any bank charges or that was received in cash. For outgoing payments, Amount due is the amount that your company should pay. The amount paid is the amount that was actually sent to the payee and the amount received is the actual amount that was cleared in their account after any bank charges or that was paid in cash. Internal payments have two amount fields, amount due and amount paid. Amount due is the amount that should be paid to your broker and the amount paid is the amount that was actually sent to the broker. The internal payment type is used to record the commission payments that your company makes to its brokers. The related internal broker field is a link to the internal broker record where the commission earnings for this transaction is recorded. This can be used to double check the amount that has been entered correctly as the amount due field should match the commission paid field in the internal broker record. The related incoming payment field is a link to the payment record where the commission payment from the client has been recorded. 
This can be used to check that the commission from the client has been received before paying the commission to the broker. The My Dashboard page is the first page that you will see when logging into your Property Nexus CRM. This page shows you all the things that need your most urgent attention. Depending on your portfolio, you may have access to view this page for your team or for everyone in the company, and this can be toggled in the drop-down list at the top of the page. The Pipeline graph shows your sales funnel starting with the leads that you are working on, the viewings that you have already set for the coming days, the listings that you are working on, and the offers that you have in process. You should always make sure that you keep your sales funnel well stocked to ensure consistent transactions in the coming weeks and months. This graph gives managers the overview of the health of the team's pipeline and will allow you to easily spot potential problems in advance. Next, you will see the tables with your pending leads, listings, and offers, as well as transactions and payment for management profiles. These tables show you the leads and listings that need your most urgent attention, and you can view these records directly by clicking on the links in the tables. On the right of the page, you have the Activities block, which shows the next 14 days of activities. You can also add new activities directly from this block to any record. The Reporting section allows you to look at records by module and see information compiled in an easy-to-read format, with each report giving you insight into a different aspect of your business. To access the report section, hover the mouse over the dashboard main tab icon in the top left of the screen and select the reports option from the drop-down list. In the gray box, you will have three drop-down lists and two boxes for filters. The first drop-down list allows you to select the module and the second drop-down list allows you to select a specific report. The third or owned by drop-down list allows you to see the records owned by you, me, your team, my team, and everyone depending on your profile access. The filters boxes allow you to select changes for which the records were created from and to, allowing you to narrow down the range of records by date. The reports in the activities module gives you insight into everything to do with your activities. The type status report shows you all of your activities by type and status. This will give you insight into the way that you tend to communicate or will show you if you are not entering all your activities in the CRM. The Broker Type Listing Activity Status Report shows you a breakdown of listing activities, viewings and photo shoots by each agent in your team or for the whole company if you have the correct profile and then by status. This will give managers a very good insight into how many viewings your brokers are conducting and indeed how well they are using the CRM. The Broker Type Communication Status Report shows you a breakdown of communication activities, meetings, phone calls, emails, and messages by each agent in your team or for the whole company if you have the correct profile and then by status. This will give managers a very good insight into the way in which your brokers are contacting their clients and indeed how well they are using the CRM. Reports in the Companies module gives you insight into everything to do with your companies. The Industry report shows you all of your companies by industry to see which type of companies you are adding to the CRM. The Broker Industry report shows you all of the companies by industry that your brokers have added. This will show you which type of companies they are adding to the CRM. For developers, you can monitor how many real estate agencies each one of your brokers represents. The reports in the contacts module gives you insight into everything to do with your contacts. The contact type report shows you all of your contacts by type to see which types of contacts you are representing. This will give you a very good overview of which side of a transaction you typically represent and may allow you to focus your efforts better. The broker contact type report shows you all of the contacts by type that your brokers represent. This will give you excellent insight into which types of clients your brokers are representing. This will help managers highlight strengths and weaknesses of brokers and help them to increase the number of different client types where required. The reports for the leads module gives you insight into everything to do with your leads as a broker, team manager, and company owner. The type, status, stage report shows you the number of sale and rent leads that you have in each status and stage. 
This gives you a quick snapshot of all the leads that you are working on and shows you how far along the process they are. Notes. 1. All your status pending leads should have pending stage 2. If this is not the case, then you will need to check these leads as the status is most likely incorrect. 2. None of your active or inactive leads should have the stage pending. If this is the case, you need to check these leads as the stage is most likely incorrect. 3. Check the stage breakdown of the closed leads to see at what stage your clients are dropping off. This will show you what percentage of leads you are closing as opposed to losing. This may also indicate that you are weaker at a particular step in the sale or rent process and you can ask your manager for training in this area. The broker status stage report is similar to the type status stage report but it can be viewed by managers and director profiles. It shows a list of brokers that you manage combining sale and rent leads. All of the above notes apply to this report and you can use them to compare the performance of your brokers. Check to see if your brokers are filling in the status and stage fields correctly and to see if they are underperforming in parts of the transaction process. The type, status, quality score report shows you the sale and rent leads that you have by status and quality score. This gives you a quick snapshot of all the leads that you are working on and the overall quality of your leads. Note 1. All your status pending leads should have unassigned quality score. If this is not the case, then you need to check these leads as the status is most likely incorrect. 2. None of your active or inactive leads should have the unassigned quality score. If this is the case, you need to check these leads as the quality score is most likely incorrect. 3. Check the percentage of good and excellent leads in your active leads to see the prospects that you have for closing sales or rentals soon. The Broker Status Quality Score Report is similar to the Type Status Quality Score Report, but it can be viewed by managers and director profiles. It also shows a list of brokers that you manage, combining the sale and rent leads. All of the above notes apply to this report and you can use them to compare the performance of your brokers. Check to see if your brokers are filling in the status and quality score fields correctly and to see the overall quality of their leads. The reports for the leads module gives you insight into everything to do with your leads as a broker, team manager and company owner. The type, status, source, channel report shows you the number of sale and rent leads that you have in each status and from each source channel. This gives you a quick snapshot of where your leads are coming from. Notes 1. See which channels are giving you the majority of your leads and the color groupings to see where you are the strongest. Blue colors are from referrals, which indicates the strengths of your network. Gray colors are for physical marketing and purple for online marketing sources. The Broker Status Source Channel Report is similar to the Type Status Source Channel Report, but it can be viewed by manager and director profiles. It shows a list of brokers that you manage, combining sale and rent leads. The notes above this applies to this report, and you can use it to compare the performance of your brokers. Check to see where your brokers are getting the majority of their leads from. Check in the health or their network and marketing efforts. The Source Channel Type Quality Score Report shows you the number of sale and rent leads that have come from each source channel and the quality score for each. This gives you a quick snapshot of how well each source channel is working, both in terms of quantity and quality of leads. This can be seen for leads owned by you, your team, or the whole company if you have the correct profile. The Referring Company Type Quality Score and Referring Contact Type Quality Score Reports are similar to the Source Channel Type Quality Score Report, except they show you the total number of sale and rent leads that have come from each referring company and referring contact respectfully. This gives you a quick snapshot of how well each referring company and referring contact is performing, both in terms of quantity and quality of leads. These can be seen for leads owned by you, your team, or the whole company if you have the correct profile. The property type, total and average leads report shows you the total number of active, inactive, and pending leads for each property type, as well as the average number of leads per listing of that property type. 
This shows you which property types are most in demand. The report in the projects module gives you insight into everything to do with your projects. The construction status report shows you the construction status of all of your projects. This is useful to check the progress of your company's construction. The report in the listings module gives you insight into everything to do with your listings. Listing report can be seen by all profile types and you can check these reports based on the listings owned by you, me, your team, my team if you are in one, and for everyone. The listing score report shows you how complete the information is in your listings, giving you insight into how good your listings look in your online advertising. The property type total and average leads report shows your portfolio of listings by property type and by the total and average number of leads. This will give you insight into how well each property type is performing and will help you understand where best to focus your efforts in the future. The status listing type property type report shows you a snapshot of your sale and rental portfolios of listings by status and property type. This is very useful to see which types of properties you currently have and those that you have sold or rented. The agreement type status report shows you the status of your listings based on the agreement type that you have for those listings. This gives excellent insight into how well you perform under different types of mandate by checking what percentage of each mandate resulted in a sold or rented listing. The report in the office module gives you insight into everything to do with your offers. The status report shows you all of your offers by status, giving you an excellent overview of how many offers you have had and how many have been cancelled or accepted. The broker status report is for managers and shows you all of your broker's offers by status, giving you an excellent overview of how your brokers are performing by seeing how many offers they have had in total and how many have been cancelled or accepted. This will also help you to identify if brokers are having a hard time converting offers to transactions and could lead to training that will improve the broker's performance. The report in the internal brokers module gives you insight into everything to do with your internal brokers. The broker transaction type brokers role report shows you which party in a transaction your brokers represent for each transaction type. This is very insightful and may identify strengths or weaknesses in a broker's performance, giving you the ability to step in and train them accordingly. The Broker Transaction Type Commissioned Earned Report shows you the total amount of commission that each of your brokers has brought into the company for each transaction type. This is a quick and easy way to track their performance and will let you identify any brokers who are not meeting their targets. The Broker Transaction Type Commission Earned Percentage Report shows you the average percentage of commission that each of your brokers has charged for their services for each transaction type. This is a quick and easy way to track their performance and an ability to charge a high commission rate and will show you how good they are at negotiating their fees. The reports in the transaction module gives you insight into everything to do with your transactions. These reports are only available to the manager and administrator profiles who have access to the transaction module. The type status report shows you all the transactions by type and status to give you an overview of the types of transactions that you do in terms of volume. Seeing how many transactions that are cancelled is a good indicator of how well you close them out and may flag issues with the transactions starting but not closing. The type company role status report shows you all of your transactions by company role and by type of transactions further broken down by status. This gives you an excellent overview of the role that your company plays in transactions and looking at the status lets you know how well you perform in each type. The type status commission currency report shows you the total amount of commission and company commissions for open and closed transactions and by transaction type. This gives you an excellent comparison between the commission paid by all clients in the transaction and the amount that your company has retained. The Type Status Commission Percentage Report shows you the average percentage of commission and company commission for open and closed transactions and by transaction type. This gives you an excellent insight into the percentage of commission that you would typically charge for each transaction. This is invaluable in budget training as well as training of brokers on how to increase their fees. The Type 
property type report shows you the types of properties that you have transacted on by transaction type. This shows you which types of properties you are typically selling or renting and could help you identify strengths and weaknesses. The type contact type source channel report shows you the source of the clients that you have closed transactions with. This is an invaluable report that shows you which source lead channels your buyers, sellers, tenants and landlords come through. This will help you identify any patterns which could signify strengths or weaknesses and show you which channels are working the best and the worst. The referring company type final price status report is for developers and shows you the sales volume that each referring company, agencies and referral partners has brought to you and splits them by status. This is an excellent and easy way of tracking the performance of your referral partners and agencies. The performance reports are there for management profiles to get an overview of the monthly and yearly performance of the company as a whole, each team and each broker, by selecting the team from the second drop-down list and the broker from the third drop-down list, you can see the performance reports for a specific team or broker. The filters allow you to select only transactions created between two dates. The drop-down for year below the graphs allows you to set the start year of the two years that you want to see the information for. There are three types of performance reports, sales volume, commission volume, and commission earned. The sales volume report shows you the performance by the volume of sales and rentals completed and in process in terms of the final sales and rental prices of the transactions. The commission volume report shows the performance by the volume of total and net company commissions on closed and open transactions. The commission earned report shows the performance by the volume of commission earned and paid to brokers on closed and open transactions. If the graph is showing open transactions in months that have already passed or closed transactions in months still to come, then the date fields in those transactions must have been filled out incorrectly. They can be changed in the transaction records and the graph will update accordingly.